Hello, Pisces. Welcome to your weekly reading for October 14th to the 20th. This is for Pisces, Pisces rising and Pisces moon. And you know, we're going to jump right into it, Pisces. Uh, this is going to be a big week. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time with you for this week. We have Mars, the sun and Pluto all getting in a tangle. Okay. Now, first things first, with a week like this, I really just want to ask you to please, 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 please do not overextend yourself. Do not overwork. Do not overdo things because it can be a little bit draining, the type of energies. And, you know, we are going to discuss it once I mute that. Uh, second thing is I really want you to pay attention to uh, Monday to Thursday. OK, that's when remember Mercury just moved into Scorpio. So we have an overlap with uh, Mercury and uh, Mercury and Venus and Scorpio for the first four days. Uh, this is going to bring a little bit of intensity. I, I do like this for you because it is in your Scorpio rules or ninth house. So that is spirituality. That's higher mind. That's gaining wisdom. That's your philosophies. It's uh, the way that you see things, your belief system. So it could be something where you are digging really deep for your higher truths. Okay. So this is uh, maybe even a time where you could be having a lot of deep conversations and maybe even deep reflections around this time, mostly around your passions, love, money. And again, like I said, like how you see things, right? Uh, so it, ninth house also rules education. There could be something that you're really exploring, uh, learning something new. It's also publishing, broadcasting. There could be some really intense passion around that as well as long distance travel. Great time to travel. So this is definitely going to be a time where um, I really want you to just consider your journey, everything that you want for your journey and not let anything get in the way because a lot of y'all are on new journeys. Okay. We just had eclipse season. Okay. You just have that new moon solar eclipse in Libra and your eighth house, personal transformation, money matters as well. Financial matter. You could have started a new project, started something new, signed new contracts, a lot of possibilities here. All right. Uh, and you see Venus is very active this week and the, I'm sorry, I got to put on my glasses. This is one of those days. It's one of those days. Uh, and then the last thing is, uh, you will see that we do have that full moon in Aries. Okay. And so there is a lot of emphasis around money for y'all finances, income, all of that. This full moon in Aries is big. And again, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more than I did in your monthly forecast. Now we kick off this week on Monday with the sun squaring Mars. So you're pretty much going to feel this a month. Uh, you're going to feel this with the fact that the sun is also squaring Pluto. And then we do have that Mars Pluto opposition that will happen beginning of November is the strongest energy around that point, but you're going to feel it. You're going to start feeling it now. It's a, it's a strong opposition. And so there really is going to be something here where I really want you to focus on your breakthroughs. Okay. Focus on your breakthroughs because this energy can be a little bit heavy and again, it can be draining. So don't overdo anything, but continue to go after the things you want, continue to go down the, you know, your path to enlightenment. All right. Because there is some competitive energy here too. Mars, remember at this point is in cancer about a month and a half in. And remember Mars doesn't do so well in cancer. So he's getting really impatient. He's getting feisty, very competitive energy. Mars and cancer is in your fifth house. So there could be themes around here for you regarding love relationships, children may be a big thing. Okay. Um, as well as creativity, there could be a little bit of creative blocks around this time that Mars is bringing. But again, remember Mars is a planet of action. So that's why I say have these breakthroughs. The other thing is, you know, the fifth house is, uh, also recreation and hobbies. So there is that element of competition there as well, like friendly diplomatic competition, but Mars is just like, ah, so just keep that in mind because it is almost like you remember when you were a kid? Oh, I don't know how, but like, you know, when there was that game of horse, you played basketball one-on-one. -on -one. It was like who H O R S E. Uh, it's almost as if you're playing Mars and Mars is just all over you at this point. It will not let you take your shot. So that's what I'm saying. Continue to go after what you want, uh, but do not overextend yourself. Okay. Uh, Mars is tangling with Chiron at this point too. So there could be a lot of internal work that you're doing, uh, a lot of like inner healing as well, especially with self-worth, self-value. The fact that Chiron is in Aries that rules that area of your chart. Now, with this type of aspect, again, I think I mentioned 
last week. Mars is physicality, so the physical energy, and it is squaring the sun, like life force, <laughs> purpose. So again, just don't overburden yourself. Remember, Mars is in Cancer. People can feel drained, and when people feel drained, emotions can be heightened. Remember, Mars is in Cancer is focusing on your emotional growth. All right, so there are possibly going to be uh, some of y'all where you may be in circumstances where people are a little bit fired up. Maybe someone's fishing for an argument from you. Listen, just remember you are on a karmic journey. Okay. Don't let anyone, don't let anyone ever bring you into their low energy frequency. All right. Don't let anyone block your path. All right. Most of all, do not let anyone take your power. All right, Pisces, just letting you know that the Sun Square Mars could even test you like spiritually as well. All right. So just remember to be your authentic self. There are going to be emotions running high. And with this type of week, especially around, you know, with these aspects, be in touch with your higher mind. OK, uh, do breath work, do yoga. Remember, uh, you know, all that just, you know, focusing on your path to enlightenment, but also being in that like great headspace as well, because Venus will uh, oppose Uranus on this same day. I mean, we are still on Monday. I mean, this is a lot that's happening. And so for y'all, Uranus and Taurus, that's your third house of communication. So there could be some moments where you may if your emotions are running high, you may say things you don't mean to say. People could say things to you they don't mean to say. These are sudden, out-of-the-blue moments that Uranus does, right? So could be something really surprising in relationships, pleasure, intimacy, money. Those are things that could come up around this time. But remember, Uranus is breakthroughs, all right? You can use this aspect to your advantage. I mean, you really don't know what Uranus is going to do because it is a planet of surprises. But again... If, if you're vibrating at this high frequency, you can own this energy. And so, yeah, you could have these breakthroughs with money, with creativity, with, you know, you might meet someone out of the blue if you are here for love. Or if you, uh, you know, there is someone that is kind of like that bridge you need to build for work or wh uh, whatever resonates with you. OK, there is potential for something to be very stimulating this day. Now, uh, Tuesday, October 15th, Venus will try and. Neptune, this is really amazing. I love this aspect for you. You know, Neptune is in your sign. Great day for romance. All right. Uh, very sensual day. Very dreamy aspect. Blast of creative energies that you may feel around this time. Your imagination just soaring. All right. This has got to be really, really, really special. So I really want you to use this to your advantage. It can be very emotionally driven too, as well. Remember, uh, uh, the, uh, Neptune is in your sign. Venus and Scorpio, that's a lot of water energy. And again, this is ninth house energy as well for you. So higher mind things that, you know, are part of your spiritual growth. Uh, you know, I, I, I just love this. Go. And this is a great day to appreciate the arts. Go to a museum. Do things like that. All right. Now, uh, it's going to inspire you. So now, October 17th, now we're on Thursday. We've got that full super moon in Aries. This is really, really, really strong. All right. There's something here that we call like a uh, cardinal cross, grand cardinal cross. And it's because the moon is in Aries, Mars is in Cancer, the sun is in Libra, Pluto is in Capricorn. So you see the, all the cardinal signs hit here. Okay. Now, what does this mean? It means to take action. Cardinal is leadership energy. Own this moment. Okay. Own this moment because there is kind of like this mess of, uh, you know, aspects that are happening, you know, opposite of the sun squaring Mars, the sun squaring Mars opposing Pluto. So it is really this tangle of planets that uh, it almost feels like the planets are doing this really intense dance off at this point. And so with that said, uh, dancing with the planets, right? And they all want to win. And these are, I mean, we're, you throw Mars, the sun, Pluto, all of them into this mix here. Wow. These are powerful. These are very they're powerful. Okay. So a lot of egos at play here. Okay. Could even be something with authority figures where you know, again, they're just, you may feel that someone says something to you or maybe even doesn't say anything to you, but it's just like that nonverbal communication. Again, emotions will be heightened. Okay. So people can say things they don't mean. People can get, you know, really frustrated about even like the tiniest things, the tiniest things. Okay. Someone took the last, uh, you know, uh, 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 m and things like that. And then they just, you know, do the angry footloose dance and like whatever it is. Just remember 
vibrate at this high frequency, okay? Do not let anyone pull you into their energy, all right? I want to remind you, you are made of energy, all right? And I say that all the time. Everything is made of energy, all right? That's not just hermetic principles. That's, uh, you know, it's quantum physics. It's your, you know, fellow Piscean, Albert Einstein, saying everything is made of energy. So the reason I'm saying that is everything, Everything is made of energy. The words that come out of your mouth, the thoughts that are in your head, all right? Emotions are completely neutral. They are completely ne uh, neutral. Emotions, take that word back to its etymological root. Emotere, energy and motion, okay? And so it's the energy that you apply toward your emotions, all right? That's why I'm talking about frequency. It's you, uh, you know, really applying toward these high emotional vibrational frequencies. You've heard about the law of attraction, right? So uh, continue to move toward your higher self, be in touch with your higher so self, explore your emotions, evolve with your emotions. I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'll, maybe I'll say it every video, your future self is watching you right now, okay? So have the karmic journey you want, have the karmic journey you deserve. We are approaching Mars opposite Pluto. Again, we'll talk more about that in November, but the reason I'm bringing it up now is because Mars happens to be exalted in Capricorn, all right? Not a lot of people know that. Mars is exalted there, right? So thrives in Capricorn, but Pluto's there right now. Remember, Pluto went direct in Capricorn. So Mars is looking at Pluto. He's like, you are in my house. Get out. Get out now, okay? Mars is just really, you know, feisty. Like I said, at this point, really can't wait to get to Leo, by the way, and that's going to happen soon. But for this time, around this time, just again, emotions can be you know heightened around this time there could definitely be something with friendships with y'all with pluto being in capricorn that's your 11th house your social network groups you belong to your community okay Commun think community um and then mars and cancer are fifth house so maybe something with you know uh, you know a true love a, a significant other maybe there is something here with like i said children okay uh and it is recreation too so uh, if, you know, you're playing tennis and, you know, you missed the ball and the person you're playing, you know, says something that you're just like, it just sets you up. You're just like, ah, right. Like, what, like a bridesmaids moment. Remember when they were playing tennis? Like something like that, because it's all in your fifth house. So just trust your intuition. And the thing with Mars and Cancer, I just have to repeat this. I've said before. I have Mars and Cancer in my birth chart. I natally have Mars and Cancer from the very first breath that I took. I've worked with Mars and Cancer energy. And that's why I say you can learn how to use these energies, these aspects. All right. So just definitely trust your intuition around this time. A lot of things are going to be illuminated for you around this full moon. Again, it is in your second house. Money, finances, salary, assets, material, you know, possessions, things that you value. So, um, and also self-worth and self-value are, you know, big themes around this time. I also want to remind you, it is completion. This is a full moon. Things are going to be illuminated, but there is a sense of like culmination, a turning point even for y'all. OK, so keep that in mind. There could have been something. Think about the new moon solar total solar eclipse we had in Aries, April 8th. What were the changes happening around your life around that time? All right. Because this is the corresponding full moon. Now, it is a full moon in Aries. Aries kicks off the zodiac wheel. All right. So there is something here that is, you know you can get really excited about for a new journey, all right? Because with every ending, there's this, you know, new cycle, new beginning. And this, again, is Aries. So there could be something here very entrepreneurial for you, something very enterprising, something inspiring, something invigorating, just something really special. Aries is very assertive energy. Work with that energy, all right? The other thing is Jupiter is in a really good spot here. All right. I know that last week I said Jupiter's not having any other aspects after last week. Well, Jupiter is detriment in Gemini and fully retrograde. So, yes, Jupiter is having this positive aspect, like training the moon. But all the other aspects just are so they're just a lot stronger. OK, but the good news is Jupiter is really striving to bring you that abundance and like so you will feel it. OK, so again, just work with those energies. Jupiter is optimism. All right. Uh, and there's a couple other things, you know, 
uh, it's training Pluto as well. There could be some powerful insights you have moving forward. I do love that Pluto and Capricorn, that is your 11th house. Remember, I said it's your social network, but it's also your hopes and wishes and dreams. All right. So this is also, and then Uranus is in a good spot here as well. Uranus, remember breakthroughs, but this is a great time to think outside the box, all right, about your future. And you may have sudden insights, okay, with the fact that Uranus and Taurus, again, your third house intellect processing thinking so uh just uh and it is a good moon for healing as well chiron is conjunct here uh full moons are a good time to uh you know ha reflect but also release all right have that release for what you know you need to release to have that relief and don't stop going after what you want all right don't be distracted by others around you be the best version of yourself all the time and always vibrate at that high frequency and i say that because when you are vibrating at a high frequency hey it impacts the people around you and then they start vibrating at a high frequency so everything within your orbit becomes a lot easier all right so uh the other thing is venus is gonna say oh i'm not even done uh, venus is gonna sex help pluto that same day let me bring this up L listen this is big for you venus sexiling pluto this is happening at 29 degrees. This is Venus having one great last moment with Pluto before moving into Sagittarius. It is strong. This is a strong aspect. It's really strong energy. This flow with relationships, with money, with romance. It's so, so nice here. I absolutely love it. And really, you know, great social moment for you. And again, it's if your, your area of your hopes and wishes and dreams. So definitely can be tied to relationships and finances, empowerment. That's what Pluto is. And then you see Venus will move into Sagittarius. And Venus will be there in Sagittarius until November 11th. And that's amazing. So much career energy for you. Sagittarius rules your house of career, public recognition, fame, honors, achievement, social status, leadership, all of that, all of that, okay? If you're not here for career, what are you exerting all your energy? Uh, into that you want to be known for this is it so this is really nice uh venus and sagittarius very pleasure seeking gaining wisdom uh very very optimistic carefree you could be uh taking a lot of risks and chances and feeling a lot more spontaneous as well around this time all right so that's it let's let's get started and you may have some uh moments around home and family too over the weekend with the moon moving into the gemini all right so let's let's get started let's see what's going on for you pisces for the week of october 14th to the 20th for pisces pisces rising and pisces moon okay pisces okay um I do a traditional cult across spread. It offers the best overview. And if we need to pull clarifiers, you know that we will. Secondly, Pisces, you know I love y'all. Thanks so much for being here. And again, y'all are amazing. And try again, please try not to like, you know, because a lot of these aspects can bring like burnout energy too. And, you know, I, you know, I'm living proof for that, it, you know, concerning the experience I went through. Uh, but that was like a lot of other things, a lot of other issues as well. So I really do appreciate and have so much gratitude for all your supports and comments that are still coming through. I am getting there. Thank you so much. Y'all are amazing. Let's get to your uh, spread. Okay, Pisces, this is definitely going to be a week. Um, I feel like you've had a similar, you did have a similar reading like this before. And so I'm seeing a lot of cards that have come up for, you know, in the past few weeks for y'all. Uh, so again, it just seems like there are shifts. There are shifts that are happening. I think that there are some things that will happen this week where it really is a time to just let things go. You may be holding on to some things that this full moon in Aries is really going to illuminate for you. And I want you to have that moment with it. Okay, let's get started. You got temperance here. All right, so this is really great. Um, a lot of here, a lot of things here are indicating, you know, career, profession, your passions, things you're working on, things like that. Okay, so that's coming up really strong. Temperance is coming up really strong, as in having that balance. And I feel like a lot of things have come into your world where things have like stabilized and you even internally, right, that 
mind, body, spirit. All right. And temperance has that sense of like moderation, like not overdoing things. Remember I said, don't overdo things, but also like not underdoing things, just having that right balance, knowing that you are on a path and you are going to reach the finish line and knowing that, you know, you have nothing to worry about and stress about because you're going to get there. Okay. That is uh, really great. I love that you got temperance. And actually, temperance is attributed to Sagittarius. And so there you go. Uh, so a lot of career stuff for a lot of you. All right. Now, you do have the five of pentacles in the heart of your spread. So again, this may indicate there may be something really challenging here. I'm getting a little bit of, you know, five of pentacles when that shows up. There really is something here. It's pentacles. So there can be something here with money. Uh, finances, how you're making money, uh, you know, uh, things like that. All right. So everything I mentioned earlier with with the fact that you have this woman Aries in your second house of income. And then we do have those squares to the sun that, you know, the sun is in Libra, right? Your eighth house are shared resources, you know, other people's money. So you've there's a lot of finance stuff happening here. Is there, it, it, it just seems like there is a situation or even a person that may be coming through. I mean, when you look at your entire spread and it can be like a boss, it can be like a company. I mean, is something holding you back? I think it's something, it may be asking you uh, this week because there may be an element of, well, I, I would love for you to, have that moment of slowing down this week and taking a pause and reflecting and really, really investigating that. Okay. You got Mercury and Venus and Scorpio. So remember that's like going deep. That's really doing that investigation. I mentioned that last week. It's very Mulder. It's like, do it. Okay. Because there may be something here where, yeah, it is affecting you. Uh, maybe even spiritually, emotionally, even mentally, there's something here. Okay. There's something here. You see that, you know, with every card there is hope you see, and I think I pointed this out when it came up in your spread last time, there's a sanctuary, literally they're, they're right there. They're literally that side. Okay. So it's a matter of reaching out to your support system, knowing there is uh, support for you. And it could even be like, if you remember, you've got all this spiritual activity, your spirit guides, trusting into, you know, your, your, your intuition, your higher mind, all of that. All right. So just keep that in mind. All right. This is uh, uh, possibly going to be a week where you may feel a little bit like challenged in that area because you also got the four cups. I'm not really worried about the four cups in your challenge area. There is a sense of like taking a look. All right. Let's let's take a look because this card is highly associated with emotional discontent that is the four of cups okay and it is associated with like apathy and boredom as well i'm not saying that any of y'all are any of the things i i just said i'm saying that's what the card is associated with all right so two things here one when i said explore your emotions and explore what's happening in your physical world as well take that time okay take that time uh, cups, emotions, feelings, love, relationships as well, uh, intuition as well. So connect with their intuition. But I'm really getting more of a feeling that there's, again, there's just someone here where you may feel that you're not satisfied with or it's vice versa, where they're just, you know, th there's a disconnect. There's, there's a big disconnect here. Because look, you got the seven of swords too. And so you got the seven of swords in your crown. So a lot of y'all may already be thinking of two things. One, I don't want to think about this. I just kind of want to, you know, this is a card of him just sneaking off with these swords. All right. So and he's looking back. You want to move. You want to look forward. You want to look forward. But facing your truths. OK. Like I said, being in touch with their higher truths, facing your truths uh, and being honest with yourself, being your authentic self and really ha like having that moment. But. At the same time, this card is associated with like dishonesty, distrust, deceit. So is there someone that you feel is possibly not someone you just you're not seeing eye to eye and there's some there needs to be something a conversation had or something done because you also got the devil and the root of your spread. OK, and so I just feel like there is something here that may be taking a lot of headspace and when you have a lot going on up here, it does have an impact on you, okay, uh, emotionally. And then when you have all those emotions that are building up, then that has an impact on you physically. 
and all of that has an impact on you spiritually, right? And when I say, you know, emotions have an impact on you physically, it's, you know, it's everything, even mentally, like you get a headache, or you're you, you over you know overthinking, over analyzing things, stressing. You get uh, you know a headache, stomach ache. Like you feel it physically. So I really want you to let the thing go that that you need to let go. I mean, with that double energy, uh, keep that in mind. Okay, you see the two people chained to the devil here. Uh, the two people from the lovers card, by the way. So again, there could be something here with love and relationships or just partnerships in general. Again, there is so much work stuff happening for y'all. First stuff, there could be something here. All right, it is identifying what it is. But I feel like a lot of y'all know, but may not be you know uh, uh, taking that action. Okay. Um, and the other thing is it could just be draining your, you, there's a feeling of, like I said, this week can be a little bit draining. You want to own those energies. Okay. You want to not feel that drain. And a lot of it is just surrendering, surrendering and releasing things that are holding you back because you got the seven of pentacles, uh, in your future. So I really want you to be, have those, uh, lines of communication open this week. All right. Seven of pentacles. Yeah. There could be something here that you're really just thinking like, is this it for me? Or do I want something else? Right. You see him also another person that's looking back, like he's not even looking at the cup. Uh, these people are just so, you know, entranced. These people are looking down. He's looking the other way. So remember, this is all about moving forward and facing your truth. Now, He's looking back too. Okay. So well, it's all about moving forward, but he's looking about at everything that he's look, he's everything that he's raked up, everything he's invested in. So there is a sense of like, yes, feel proud of how far you've come. But now think about where you're at. Is it where you want to be? And if it is, that's great. But what is that thing that you still, it's maybe even the back of your head, right? What is that thing uh, that you may want to like uh, and then release? Yeah. There, you've got a, there's something you've got, you're going to be, you, let's work on that. All right, Pisces, you got the eight of swords as well and the moon. Okay. So there is definitely something here. I really want you to pay attention to, uh, it does feel like, uh, there is, I think I said it earlier, a lot of it just feels like there's someone else in the picture here. And I just feel like the seven of swords, oh, I'm sorry, seven of pentacles. There is a sense of like, what have you invested in? And do I want to continue doing this? Now you have the eight of swords. You really have to make that decision or you're just going to be ooh in your head. And then when you're not facing your truth, this we call the self victim card, right? When you are, you know, not facing your truth uh, and really you, your fears as well. All that is going to just, you know, be up here and then you get the moon and that just like amplifies that energy. So this is all about taking action to get out of that headspace, to have that communication. The moon, I mean, that looks like a pretty full moon to me. You know, we do have this full moon in Aries. Like I said, self-worth, self-value, the value that you bring to things, knowing your worth, okay? Uh, and you know the moon in tarot is actually attributed to Pisces. So I think that there's going to be have to, there's going to be some deep reflection that may be required this week okay there yeah there may be some um deep reflection there's a lot going on up here you notice you didn't get any wands either ones which are so invigorating and they're just so lively and they're you know uh, you know create your creativity and uh your passions your ambitions so uh, work with that energy um i would really there's something to me that you may feel that if you feel that it is something that you're ignoring, it's just going to, again, you may just dwell on it. It may get deeply rooted in your subconscious. You want to unroot that. Okay. Pisces, let's get to your staff. Let's see what says, let's see what's going on here. All right. Let's, uh, let's explore this Pisces. Um, and leave calm. Tell me what's going on. Yeah. The like subscribe, all of that. Um, but I, I'm more, I just really want to hear what's going on with y'all. This is a, this is a big week. Okay. So, uh, let me know. Okay. And you know, I'm here for you. You know, I love y'all. All right. So let's, let's, let's bring it. Okay. So, uh, you do the work that you do the work. You're going to be fine. You see that you're going through a really big, this is a big transformative week for you. Uh, yeah. And let's get started. Okay. You got the knight of swords here. So 
uh, you know, I do love the fact that you got the Knight of Swords. Knight of Swords is someone who is just very bold, very courageous. He's got this like confidence that it's like he oozes confidence. I mean, he's going into the storm. You see the fire under his feet. So there is a sense where um, two things here. One, yes, for a lot of y'all who are feeling that you may be stuck, uh, you know, with the Seven of Swords and the Eight of Swords here, if you, like up here, boom, have that breakthrough. That mental breakthrough, okay? There is a lot of, you know, potential there where it's just breaking free, okay? Nothing's going to hold them back. Again, charging forward here, right? Uh, so the other thing is, is that some of y'all try not to have your minds racing too much, okay? If you feel that that's happening, pull back, really go. You know, take that time. Just take like five minutes, right? Five minutes a day, all right? Increase it uh, a little bit every time just thinking, okay? I want to root this, and mm, but I'm afraid of it. Ask yourself, why am I afraid of this? Why do I not want to confront this? Go deep. Go deep to the root. You got the judgment in your external factors, all right? So this is very powerful because Pluto is very active this week, and I said you can use that energy for yourself. Uh, judgment is attributed to Pluto. Now, uh, here's the thing. A judgment in your external factors. You have an archangel here. You have Archangel Gabriel. Remember what I said about raising your frequency. Well, this is it. Okay. This is the only card in tarot that has a really strong connotation of sound, right? What is sound? It's vibrations. Uh -huh. What's vibrations? It's healing. And you see the sound here, raising the dead. All right. And now they're seeking this meaningful life experience. So this is having this huge spiritual awakening, this aha moment, this like wake up call, right? It's in your external factors area with the moon. I mean, there is something here where there is that burst of like spiritual growth. Uh, and I feel like you're just going to have that. I, I, I think you're, naturally you're just going to have that this week. Um, the other thing is uh, with judgment in your external factors area, there really could be something that happens this week. Uh, like I said, where you do have that moment. Okay. But I'm still getting someone else. Okay. So I'm still getting someone else. You may have to have that person like come on board with you. All right. Seeing eye to eye. You also got the hermit, another card where it's just going deep, very spiritual, doing that soul searching. When I say going deep, find that light inside you. Okay. Radiate, radiate. Okay. And I think a lot of y'all want to do that, you know, with the hermit, you know, as a third card in your staff. So have that moment of reflection. There really could, again, something here with part, there's something here with partnerships that, for a lot of y'all that you that may resonate with you again that can be a significant other that can be a work related thing it can be a realtor whatever there's something here all right but uh even the fact that the hermit is virgo virgo rules your seventh house or opposite sign that's going to be a bigger story played out with the nodes moving into uh you know the pisces virgo axis right so you're going to be fine if do the work okay do the work and it might be uncomfortable sometimes you have to get uncomfortable to get really comfortable because i mean you got the 10 of cups and your final outcome you're going to be fine okay you got to do that work you're going to be fine this is a rainbow look at the happy couple all right look at the happy kids remember i said there's a lot of children energy for y'all this week as well uh if you have kids uh maybe if you're a teacher as well i would be surprised with you know uh for a lot of y'all with what's happening but this is happy everything. This is joy. This is so much joy, pleasure, happiness. This is, you know, uh, uh, the rainbows over the, uh, the rainbow over the head, the uh, cups over their head, a lot of enlightenment here. This is what you're moving toward. This is all that potential is right there for you. So it really is a matter of doing that work to get there. Um, because there is something and yeah, there may be something there. Uh, this could also indicate like a loss of something. But again, you have to see it as, OK, that was something that I had to let go. Let me move forward. OK, because if you do not move forward, if you do not accept things, if you do, you know, like this is just stewing in a lot of thought, emotions, overanalyzing, overthinking things. Um, and, you know, I'll even clarify the moon for you, too. I mean, the moon is, uh, yeah, because it does see you here. So it is all saying that you've got to know what you want. you got to move forward. you got the Seven of Cups now. So there is going to be, you know, but the great thing about the Seven of Cups, clarifying the moon here, is that, yeah, there could be a lot of opportunities for you. Um, but you've got to know what you want. You've got to feel it in your bones because there may be some shifts this week. I said this is going to be a big full moon in Aries. OK, so 
just know this is this is all up to you letting some things go facing your truths and if is someone that is doing something to you lying cheating stealing being deceitful being dishonest there's a reason why this person stealing the cards in broad daylight right there's a reason for that they can be caught in fact yeah you did get this card last week as well so uh I think that there may be some, so really pay attention to that card. Always a big sign when the same same card appears in the next week's reading, right? That's telling you something, okay? So Pisces, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, this is gonna be a big week. I am uh, very very here for you. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about like a lot of the aspects that are happening and do more channeling in my next live stream if you want to watch that. Uh, but it, it's gonna be this weekend, okay? So. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. Next week, we are fully moving into Scorpio season. So I really like that for you because it is your ninth house. So there's going to be a lot of energy there. Spirituality, being in touch with your higher mind, all of the, everything I mentioned earlier. All right. But there, are, we'll talk about all the aspects next week and, and, and whatnot. We do have some great aspects for you. All right. So thanks so much. If you like this reading, it'll be great. If you like, subscribe, leave comments. Let me know what's going on and I'll see you next week. Thanks so much, Pisces. Okay. Bye-bye.